I see plumbing businesses making the same mistake over and over. They base their prices on their competition. How do you know if their business is profitable? The right customer doesn't care about price, they just want their day back. I guarantee you, you're not making any money if you're not charging at least. <laughs> What's up, Joel? <laughs> I was, I, um, <laughs> I'll send our podcast out to people that I talk to. Yeah. And sometimes they'll autoplay. And it's so funny to hear your voice come through on the podcast yeah. and mine. I almost respond. I'd be like, what's up, Joel? And I'd be like, hey, oh, oh, that's just on my computer screen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, to all you guys out there who have your own podcasts, you understand. They that understand. When you're listening to yourself yep. on your podcast. And you're with, laughing at your own jokes. Dude, that's the best part, actually, <laughs> is when you laugh at your own jokes. Because yeah. you laugh in the same way you laughed on the podcast. At the same stuff, at the same time. It's actually yes. quite remarkable. What's funny is I can watch the podcast and I can predict how you're going to laugh, <laughs> when you're going to laugh, and how you're going to laugh. You just know my joke so well. You just know when one's yeah. coming. Spoon. Spoon. No, yeah. spoon. It's a P. Spoon. F-P. F-P. Yeah, spoon. Oh, yeah. That'd be impossible. That's why it's fun to say. Yeah. You should keep practicing it, though. Okay. Today, we're going to talk about my absolute favorite topic. <laughs> Uh, bouncy, bouncy houses. Yeah, bouncy houses and spanking your children. No, <laughs> I don't know why that came up. <laughs> it's okay. You're a disciplinarian at heart. I am. I totally am. Um, we're going to talk about pricing your plumbing business in 2024, okay? Because it's different than 2023. Mm. Same what? concept, but it's different. Gotcha. Man, okay. You know, we're coming up on a new year. Mm -hmm. People are jumping out, starting their plumbing businesses. Um, you know, it's a different game today than it was 10 years ago. It's, it's a different <clears throat> game today than it was three years ago. Oh, definitely. Right. Um, and so if you're not prepared, if you're not thinking about that, you're not going to do very well. And this is mm. the reason we're going to talk about this is going into <laughs> the new year is because this is the number one mistake that people make when they start their plumbing business. There's a ton of things you can do. There's a ton of mistakes you can make. But if you can avoid this one pitfall, mm. you'll be so much, like, you'll make it through the rest of them. Yeah. You will. This is the one that, that will bring you down. Yeah, and this is the one that you can do wrong and still be in business for too long. And, yeah, not make any money. Yeah, and you won't <laughs> realize that you've made a mistake until 30 years later, and you're like, dang, I still, this still sucks. Correct. Yep. <laughs> So I haven't like broke down how we want to break this down as far as like discuss on it. Um, but I feel like it would probably be a good, we could lead into it with, we should probably lead into it with why it's so important. Let's see. Like why it's so important, how you price your service or understanding how well, you price or like. Let's just let's just get right like to the guts of it. Most people underprice their business, right? Yeah. Why do you think they do that? Because they don't know any better. Because they're they're plumbers that start a plumbing business and they don't understand business. That's all it is. Yeah. It's, it's just that's it, right? So you're saying that? Well, there's so many guys who are undercharging. So how can so many guys not not know? Right. They just don't know. Yeah. They're just plumbers, right? Yeah. And it, it boils down to like the, like we have like a, we'll call it a pandemic, right? We have a pandemic of undercharging plumbers in the United States who undervalue themselves, have no idea what it actually costs to be in business, mm -hmm. have don't even understand like <clears throat> basic business principles. So they're out there running plumbing businesses and they're barely making it and they think it's normal, right? Mm -hmm. And they continue in that forever. <clears throat> so we have we have that, and then we have the very far and few between plumbing businesses mm -hmm. who are actually doing it properly, right? Yeah. And so what ends up happening is the ones that are doing it wrong look at the ones who are doing it properly, and they just assume they're ripping people off because that's not how they're doing it. Right. Yeah, that's not how they were almost raised to think about it. <clears throat> right. But the reality is it's actually the reverse mm. of what they think. And so when they go to start their own business, they just undercharge because it's what they're used to. The guys who, who have worked for successful companies, mm -hmm. they have such a huge head start <clears throat> mentally 
over the guys who have never worked for like a successful service company that actually makes money mm -hmm. um, because they have so much head trash to go through. Yeah, and, and the guys who, and like they have such a head start and yet even they will fall into this trap. True. And it's amazing because it's like the guy, like I talked to a guy yesterday who's like, I sold over a million dollars for my company this year. Yeah. And I'm going to start my new business in the next 90 days or whatever. Yeah. I was like, cool. And I was like, you need to understand how to run your numbers. Yeah. Like, you know that you can sell well yep. at a probably higher, at an expensive rate. Yep. Don't fall into the trap and say, I'm just going to start it at 200 bucks an hour because I don't have any overhead. Yep. Because like, man, I hear that a lot where it's like, well, we can get away with 120 because my truck's paid off and we work out of our house and all these things yep. and we're cutting back expenses. Yep. Like cutting back expenses to increase profitability, I guess at certain times could be appropriate. But probably not when you're talking, well, not when you're talking about pricing your services. Nope. So the react, like people think there's a cap at which they can charge, right? And so they try to fit all of their business inside that cap. Yeah. And there is no, there probably is a cap to what you can charge, but I haven't found it yet. Yeah. Cause I mean, that cap is like, the cap is set by the market. The cap is set by the, but by not, the market. But not by like what, what probably a lot of people thought when we just said that. Yep. Okay, so let's start right there then. Let's break that down for these guys. So there's a certain cost associated to running your plumbing business. And a real, a real business says, okay, it cost me this much to provide this product. Um, now I need to cover that cost plus cover my overhead plus make a profit at the end of the day. So the way I like to think about this is let's, we'll just use this coffee cup, for instance, that I have in my hand here for all you non YouTube listeners out there. I have a coffee cup. Okay. And let's say this coffee cup was made, let's say it was just made in China and somebody in the United States is just buying this cup and reselling it in America, okay? There's a cost to purchasing the cup. So let's say let's say they purchase this cup for a dollar. There's a cost to shipping the cup from China to the United States. And then they have the cost <clears throat> of packaging. So if they were going to ship this out to somebody who bought it, they would have to package it. And then there's a cost to actually shipping it out to the customer, okay? So if you're looking at your profit and loss statement, you would have, if you sold 100 mugs, you would have, well, we got to get into the, the breakdown of this a little further. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay. You're in the business of buying and selling coffee cups, okay? Um, and let's say each step costs a dollar. So shipping is a dollar, the cup's a dollar, the packaging is a dollar, and then to ship it out is a dollar, okay? Those are your cogs your cost of goods sold, okay? That's what it actually costs you to like buy and resell this cup to a customer. <coughs> now you need to add in overhead to this cup, okay? So let's say you have a warehouse and you have employees that pack the cups and you have marketing spend to market your cups. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Like, like why is... When does overhead become overhead and not, when is it not overhead? Anything that is not a cog, cost of goods sold, is overhead. Yeah. Like doesn't like touch the product specifically. Yes. Like it exists to support that product being sold, yep. but it's not it's really a, like. It's not directly related to the mm, fulfillment yeah, of the product or service. I guess you wouldn't really need a warehouse. You could just have a vacant street. Correct. And you just throw all your stuff on the street before you ship it out. Correct. Yeah, gotcha. So overhead is is more of the variable components that some people have, some people don't have. I mean, I would, to an extent, but like if I'm going to scale this coffee cup business, I'm not going to be able to do it on the street or out of my garage or right. in my living room. But the point is, is that somebody might be able to run this coffee cup business properly because of the nature of their street. But since you're two towns over, you need a warehouse. Like the point is, is that overhead fluctuates. Overhead fluctuates. And this it, that's a good point because guys will say, we hear it on our comments on our reels all the time. 
Like, there's no way I could charge that in my market. If I charge that in my market, I wouldn't have any work. And the reality is you may not need to charge that in your market. Like, this isn't a, this is how much it costs to run mm. a plumbing business. Mm -hmm. The cost varies all over the United States. Mm -hmm. So the higher cost areas where it costs more to get a shop, costs more to get quality talent, it costs more to get, you know, even like phone bills vary mm. across the United States. Then it's going to cost more to run your plumbing business, which means you're going to have to charge more to cover your costs and still make a profit. Right. Okay. Right. So the the whole idea is like you need to know mm. exactly what it costs you to run a plumbing business. You need to know exactly what your cogs are, what your overhead is, and how much profit you want to make. Otherwise, you're just guessing, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. So this company, it costs them $4 to get this mug out, okay? <clears throat> but then they have other costs, their overhead costs, right. okay? So what they would want to do is they would want to say, okay, I've got, we have the capability in our shop that we have now to buy and resell 1,000 mugs a year, okay? So they would take their overhead cost and they would divide it by 1,000, and that would tell them how much overhead is in one coffee cap, right? So let's say the overhead is $5. Let's say it's another $4. Let's go six, make it easy math. <laughs> let's say it's $6 in overhead, $4 for the cogs of the coffee cup. We're at a $10 cost mm. just to get this coffee cup, repackage sure. it, send it out to your house. Right, get it in the hands of the consumer. Yeah, now we need to add profit margin, mm. right? Because whenever we sell you something, we need to make a profit on it. Mm -hmm. That's the whole goal of the business, sure. is to make profit. Yeah, you don't want to operate your business at cost. Correct. Mm. So to add margin, like let's say we want to make 20% net profit margin, right? The very end of your P&L, after everything's paid, we want to make 20% profit yeah, which on is, this coffee cup. Which is common, which is referred to as your bottom line. Correct. Most people would say we got to sell this for $12 to make 20% profit, but that's not the case. Mm. What would that actually get you in profit if you just sold it for 12? I think it it goes down to like I don't know the exact numbers. If you're to, if you're just going to multiply it by 1.2, I think you knock it down to 16 or 17% mm. profit. So you're missing a couple percentages. The the actual calculation you want to do is you want to take 10 divided by 0.7. Mm. That will give you a thirty percent profit margin, and right? so that will give you what you. So that'll come out with what will that come out with? Uh, I don't know. Would I have? To, I'd have to do the math. Let's do it. I got math. My, I got my phone today. Oh, math, dang, math time. <clears throat> give me just a minute. Hopefully, it doesn't take you a minute. So ten <laughs> divided by point seven be fourteen dollars and twenty eight cents. Cool. Yeah. So just think about it. If you don't do that calculation properly, that'd be that'd be thirty percent. Oh, okay. 10, to, 10 divided by 0.8 would be 20%, be $12.50. Yeah, gotcha. So if you didn't do it properly, you'd be shined by 50%. Yep. 50 cents, 50%. <laughs> and so you can imagine the bigger these numbers get, sure. the bigger that difference is, okay? Yep. So in essence, this coffee cup company is in the business of buying coffee cups, packing them, and reselling to you. Right. Extremely simple business model, mm -hmm. right? That's all they do. They buy, they pack, they reship, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That's how they would go about pricing their cups in the marketplace. Your plumbing business is not is like no different, mm -hmm. okay? You have a product that you're selling. Instead of selling a product, you're selling a service, which is, at the end of the day, just a product, yep. okay? Yep. And so you have a cost of goods sold or a cost of fulfilling that product, which would be, let's think about it this way. What are you selling when you're selling plumbing service? Like, what are you buying and reselling? Mm, let's see. You're selling somebody who can do the work. Correct. And? You're probably selling the van that they drive around in? Uh-uh. Mm. Oh, right, because the they customer's don't, not buying they, a van. They don't necessarily need the van to do the work. Nope. Like they need they need tools to do the work. They can't just use their hands. 
Nope. They're not buying. Like, what is the customer buying from you? Mm, knowledge. Know-how. No. Nope. Mm. Well, they're buying a... I mean, they're essentially just buying somebody's time, right? They are buying plumbing materials and mm. skilled labor to put those materials in. Gotcha. Those are your cogs, okay? Gotcha. So the, the cost of the materials you install... Mm-hmm. Plus the cost of the skilled labor, mm. that's what you're selling, okay? And that's what the customer is ultimately buying. Sure. So you are in the business of buying, reselling materials mm-hmm. and skilled labor. Like that's your simple business model as a plumbing yeah, service sure. company, okay? So your cogs are all of your job materials and anything associated with your technician labor or your plumber labor. Mm. So it's their labor. Mm. It's the benefits that you pay them. Like their hourly, like their time on the check, like that. That's the Yeah, their labor. hourly rate, their mm-hmm. commission, sure. however you pay them. Though, like if it's a combination of those <laughs> two, it's both of them. Mm-hmm. The employer taxes that you pay on them needs to be in there. And any benefits that you give that technician sure. are part <clears throat> of your cogs, okay? Because that's ultimately what you're buying and reselling. Right, yeah. Okay? Yeah, sure. Everything else in your mm-hmm. business is overhead. Sure. Okay? So you can imagine just like, like what are we selling? We're Instead of selling one individual coffee cup, we're selling units of time, right? Mm. So it's it's easy to measure coffee cups because we have one of them. When we're selling technicians, we can't sell. We have one technician, right? Yeah, one technician. You have them for the year. Do whatever you yeah, want. It's we need cost to, you this much. Yeah, <laughs> we need to split that up into a mm. measurable unit that sure. we can use to then price the rest of our services. Okay. Right. So the easiest way to do that is to use time. Sure. Because we know exactly how many hours those technicians are going to work. Right, sure. Right? If we're working a 40-hour week and we're working 52 weeks a year, they're typically only working like 50 weeks a year. Mm. On average, they're going to work about 2,000 hours, right? Mm -hmm. So now, just like we did with the coffee cup, Mm -hmm. we can say, okay, these are my cogs. (laughs) This is my overhead. Sure. I need to divide my overhead by how much each, Mm -hmm. by by how Mm -hmm. many hours I have available, right? Right. But there's a kicker with, plumbing service we don't bill out all of those hours do we yeah it's not going to be it's not going to if you did that you would probably not have very much money at (laughs) the end of the year (laughs) so when you're trying to figure out your billable hours Mm. um you need to like your what your hourly rate is going to be that you bill the customer you have to boil it down to billable hours sure so average service company is 55 percent so if you have a guy that works 2,000 hours, he only works, he's only going to bill out 1,100 of those hours. Yeah, he's going to be working 2,000 hours. Yes. But he's not going to be billing out 2,000 hours. Correct. You're going to pay him for 2,000 hours, mm-hmm. depending on how you pay him. Right. Um, but you are, he's only going to bill out 1,100 of those hours. Mm, yeah. Okay. So you got to make up for that. So you have to cover mm. the cost of the materials. Materials we can do separate, but you have to cover the cost of that technician. Mm. And you have to cover his portion of the overhead mm. in your hourly rate. Then you have to tack on a profit. Sure. Okay. So that's like the math behind how you figure out what your hourly rate is. Okay. How many how many guys get tripped up over the billable hours part in your experience? Um some people do. Like if they come from, you know, commercial construction or they come from a company that's running them ragged, charge an hourly, but a really low hourly rate where you can, where you can fluff your whole day basically. Like sure. the last cut, you know, you can run this calculation at a hundred percent, and if you were to bill out a hundred percent of your time, it would lower your hourly rate, but it's still higher than what most people are charging. Mm, sure, that's the sure. funny part. So, yeah. like the last uh, service contractor I worked for, they were, I believe, one hundred and sixty an hour. And they wanted you to have 100% billable time on your time card. Wow. So you never huh. had a moment that didn't go unbilled. Huh. Right? 
So how, we, did, how did you like? How did you go about that day to, to achieve that? It was impossible. Because if you're in your head, you're like, okay, I got to hit eight billable hours today. I essentially have to work until I hit eight billable hours today. Well, it was no, it was impossible. We never did it. And sure, then, of course, what would end up happening is we would fluff our time. So it'd be like, <laughs> this customer needs to get billed from you know eight a.m. to ten thirty, and then the next customer needs to get billed from ten thirty to this much, right? Sure. And it, it, it really wasn't fair to the customer because we could never give them a quote up front. And so then mm. the office would send them a bill oh, sure. after the fact. And they never agreed to that. And there was nothing to agree and to. They'd always call back and complain. Like, he was only here for, why am I getting billed for four hours? He was only here for one and a half. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, and I can tell you right now, that company didn't make any money. Zero. Yeah, because they were already undercharging, but then they were already... They were... The, yeah. the real reality is they were just undercharging. That's yep. it. They could if they just would have raised their rates and gone flat rate. They, they, I probably wouldn't have been able to start my company. Yeah, because you would have been like, "This is fine." <laughs> yeah, like, I, I can work here. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of funny when you think about it. It is funny. Anyway, so when <laughs> when you're doing that, right? That's like the. That's like the overarching math behind yeah. it, right? For these guys that are starting out, it's a little tougher, right? Sure, because if you have if you have established overhead and costs and you're doing these things and you can just like, oh, this is what it is right now. Right. I just need to do what I'm doing right now because I got like five bands or whatever. Right. So if you've got a shop and a CSR mm -hmm. and three bands and the owner is out of the truck and you have marketing expenses, and you have all the normal expenses of like a real business, right? Then it's real easy to like go into a calculator. You guys can grab our calculator. It's down in the description of our YouTube video. If you grab it, there's a whole video that walks you through how to use it. Um, if you use it and you actually are honest with yourself and you charge what number it spits out, because it's just math, you will be <laughs> successful and be profitable. Yeah. Yeah. It's just math. Um, it's not... Doesn't lie. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Um, there's a link in the description. Go grab it. It's free. Mm. All you got to do is give us your email. You can book a call with us afterwards if you want. If you want help growing and scaling and profitably running and systemizing a plumbing business, we can help you do that. Um, so you need to figure out, and if you go, if anybody goes and watches that earlier at Calculator Video, you, you'll see it. There's what I like to call like minimum barrier to entry, right? Mm. So there's the plumbing business that grows and all of a sudden it's like, okay, we're actually a real business. Mm. And so to determine that, it's like, what's the, what's the first point in which you're a real business and you're at maximum expenses for how many technicians you have out in the field, right? We have to determine like what's that baseline. Mm. So when you're growing your plumbing business, there comes a time when you, as the business owner, if you want to continue to grow and scale, you cannot be out in the field anymore. Yeah, sure. And typically that's around three guys. Mm. So once three guys, including the business owner. No, three guys out in the field billing, gotcha. and a CSR in the office. Mm. Right at that point in time, those three guys that are out in the field doing their stuff and the CSR in the office, they need management. Right. And so the business owner needs to stop going out in the field and pull back into the office. And so, okay, I am a general manager and a business owner now. I no longer wear the CSR hat or the technician hat. Yeah, sure. And <clears throat> he has to do that if he wants to continue to grow. Otherwise, he'll never have the time mm. or the wherewithal to continue to grow his business. Yeah. Okay? Because yep. there's other stuff he needs to start putting in place at that point in time that he just doesn't have time for if he's out in the field. And part of the temptation is to slip back into the field part to of help it, yeah. out. To yep. I could just go out there and make a ton of money today and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But that's short-sighted. It's that short-sighted. And I, I would recommend doing that if you were short on cash. Mm, sure. Right? But before you go do that, Make sure you're charging enough so that when you do go back out in the field, yeah. you're really building up that cash quick. Right. Like nobody can build cash faster than the owner. True. He's more motivated. He's 
he he doesn't have to pay a technician to go do it, right? Right. Yeah. When yeah, he yeah. goes out and bills, it just he's just paying right to his bottom line. Mm. Um, and so he can build cash much faster. Right. So if you're in a spot where you're down on cash and you have three technicians and you have enough work for four, fastest way to get more cash, go out in the field. Right. You could probably do it for like a month and it would make a massive difference on the amount of cash in your bank account. Yeah, if you're priced properly. If you're priced properly. And then you could pull out of the field again, hire technician number four, sure. and you'd have a nice little cash cushion there, yeah. right? Um, so at that point, right, that is the most expensive point in your plumbing business. It's the first time in your business where you had to add overhead, right? Because now when the technician moves, or when the owner mm -hmm. moves from technician mm -hmm. to business owner, he's all of a sudden not a revenue producing employee. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Right? So that increases overhead. He moves from being a cog, mm -hmm. right? A revenue mm -hmm. producing employee to a non-revenue producing employee, which is overhead. Yeah, because before that, like he would be a cog and as the business owner, he's also overhead. But he sits in the cog thing because he, he's thinking about the business. If he was if he was acting as a technician in his business, he's technically a cog. Yeah, even right? if he's doing manager stuff. Yeah, like you could be in the truck with like five guys having to just stay in the truck for whatever reason, probably because you're undercharging. At that point, I would put you in overhead in my P and L. Yeah, and it would just show you that you're not priced properly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. If you're acting as a technician, you should be acting as a technician. Hmm. Most of the time. That's a good, well, it's a good point. Like if you're acting as a technician, you need to factor yourself in your P&L as a technician. Yes. Yep. Or otherwise. That way you have an accurate idea of what your P&L is telling you. Yeah. And then when you pull out an overhead, take yourself out of that COGS part and now you're in the overhead part. Correct. And that will give you an accurate view of if your COGS are correct or out of whack or if your overhead is correct or out of whack. Mm. Right. And we can go over that probably later. Um, like back up a couple steps. Where were we? We were, I think we were talking to like, you okay. pull out of the field. It's the most expensive. It's an, ex right. the first most expensive time in your business because you've just added overhead. You reached a point in your business where you have to add overhead in order to keep scaling. Mm -hmm. And that's, this is the name of the game. As you scale your business, mm. there comes times in your business throughout the entire life of the business. Every time you want to do more revenue, there will come a time <coughs> where you have to bring in mm. more overhead to continue to scale. And that's what most people call, you know, I think Grant Cardone calls it breakpoints. Most people call it the valley of despair <laughs> because you just increased overhead. And if you're not charging enough, yeah. you won't be profitable at that point. If you're not prepared for it. If you're not prepared for it. So... When you go to price your plumbing company, you want to price it for that point because right. it's the most expensive point. Yeah, from and, the beginning you're talking about, like when you're first starting out, you want yep. to price for that future. Yep. And any time that you want to scale and add overhead, you're going to have to go, you're going to be the same, like it's going to cost you the same, mm -hmm. right? So when you go to hire a general manager because the business needs you to be the business owner and not the general manager anymore, it's going to cost you the same mm -hmm. as when you had to pull out of the field to be general manager and not play technician anymore, mm. okay? So for anybody who is just starting their business or is under three trucks, you want to figure out your pricing like you have three trucks, mm -hmm. shop rent, a CSR, a healthy marketing budget, owner pay, that is that you yeah, that yeah. is built mm. into your overhead, not not out of your profit, not out of your profit. Like yeah, like the 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 whole strategy of I just pay myself what's left. No, that's you, not that's not a that's you not make how a you regular paycheck and then your business <clears throat> makes a profit as well yes. on top of it. Yes, that's what a business is, right? And so at that point, like if you don't know, like imagine it's a at that point it's a real business, mm -hmm. okay. You have a legit business. And anybody who wants to come in and grow to a three-man plumbing shop with a general manager mm -hmm. and a CSR, they're going to have all the same expenses. So I like to call it, it's the minimum barrier to entry, Sure, right? So anybody who makes it to that point, 
and is still profitable at that point, they're not going to be able to do it any cheaper than you, <clears throat> right? Unless you have a bunch of dumb expenses. Sure, right? of course. So you can think about right then and there at that point with three guys, a general manager, or sorry, you as a general manager and a CSR and a shop and vans and van wraps and a marketing budget, okay? Your expenses at that point, because like, well, like we priced this coffee cup out, right? And the value was determined by how much it cost me to provide this to you, mm-hmm. right? That's what determines the value. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> the only way somebody could mm-hmm. offer this at a cheaper price point mm. would be to lower the cost of what uh-huh. it costs to get this. Yep. You can only lower costs so far. Sure, of course. Right? And so the the trap that most plumbing business owners fall into is they just keep trying to lower costs, keep kind of trying to lower costs because yeah. they believe there's a ceiling on what they can charge. Yeah. When the reality is it's not the case. They need to build a good business and charge what it costs to operate a good business. Right. 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 And that's how they're going to beat their competition. Mm. Because all the competitors around them are are running that race to the bottom. And this, I think this is very true in very saturated markets. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, I've talked to guys recently who are it's like, it's tough out here. But these guys are charging on the lower scale. Mm-hmm. And so they're all competing in this lower threshold of competition. Correct. Where everybody is competing on how much stuff can re- we remove to be able to you, get the customers. You go from being a product to a commodity. You go to selling service to selling plumbing. Mm. Right. Mm, sure, that's a good way to put it. So, in a cu- like when a customer calls you, and they want the bottom dollar, they just turned you into a commodity. Right. When things are a commodity, the cheapest price wins. Right. If all coffee cups are equal, they're all made exactly the same. They're all the same color. They're all the same shape. Exactly <clears throat> the same, identical. Then the cheapest one wins by default. Sure. But if I come into the market and I make a coffee cup that looks just like all the other ones. Could be just be a different color. Let's just say it looks cooler and it keeps your coffee hotter longer. All of a sudden, I'm able to charge way more for that coffee mm-hmm. cup. Yeah. Because I took myself out of the market of thousands of coffee cup creators and put myself in a market of one. I'm not just a regular old coffee cup. Yeah. I'm a... That's how you get. That's how you do it. You just hold it up there. Um, <laughs> I am all of a sudden a coffee cup that has incredible value. Mm. I am all of a sudden in a market all by myself. I'm no longer a coffee cup. Mm. I may keep your coffee hot longer and look cool mm-hmm. while you drink coffee, mm-hmm. right? You do the exact same thing with your plumbing business, mm. okay? If you drive a white van and you try to keep costs down and you don't pay your plumbers very well, and you don't set up your business very well, and you don't Mm. provide value to your customers, and you're just racing to the bottom on price, you're going to get commoditized. You're going to be just another coffee cup Mm. in a sea of coffee cups, right? And when when you're trying to, like, imagine if I tried to create this coffee cup up here that had more value, but I was trying to sell it at the same price. Mm, Sure, because you... To make that coffee stay hotter, you have to add different components that are probably going to cost more and cost me more to make this cup. You know, the cool looking whatever you got going on is going to be more expensive. Correct. So it's not going to work, is it? I'm going to have to cut corners. Yeah, you're going to have to like skimp on the packaging to do it. Correct. And you have more broken coffee cups. Correct. And more pissed off customers. And that's what plumbing businesses are trying to do. Mm. They're trying to cut corners. Most of them are trying to provide as much value as they can to the customer, but they just can't because they're not charging enough for their service, okay? Yeah, and and man, I know this because I'll talk to guys and they'll be like, well, we looked into this, but it was too expensive. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you already don't understand like how price functions in your business. Because yep. when you understand price, you don't look at things and go, dang, I wish I could get service tight and it's just too expensive. Yeah. You'd go, huh, it seems like a reasonable thing I need in my overhead to be able to run this business. I'll just increase my price to accommodate its cost. Seems like this will add a lot of value to my customers. Right. And allow me to do things for my customers that I couldn't do if I didn't have this software. So then it becomes a valuable cost. Right. Okay. 
So, and that brings up another good point is if I was to take this coffee cup again and just add in a cost that mm-hmm. didn't bring <clears throat> the end user any more value, then I won't be able to charge more for this coffee cup. Right. Because there's, it's no different than the other coffee cups. Right. Let's say I use a different kind of clay in this coffee cup mm-hmm. w- that just costs more with no added benefit to the end user. Hmm. Right. Yeah, it seems like a stupid thing. And to then do. I have to charge more for this coffee cup. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be able to sell it for more. So you can't just go inflate your expenses right. without bringing any value to the end user. Right. Yeah. Which I'll be honest, like most plumbers are on the opposite end of that spectrum. Yes. They want to do a good job, they want to provide value for their customers. A lot of them, you know, they're listening to podcasts, they're like, okay, I, I need uniforms. I need a price book. I need these tools to do I need this these thing tools. to make it more efficient, like all the things. I need fancy vans. I need all all this stuff. They're trying to provide the value, but then they're not charging the price for the value that they're bringing, right? And so they just go down, 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 bottom dollar, lose money, lose money, and they end up having to cut stuff or cut corners or be stressed out all because they're not charging enough, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, seems a uh, <clears throat> seems like a very why is this why is this it seems simple, right? Like at the end of the day it's math and understanding numbers. So like why outside of just people don't have business training when they become plumbers? Like it's, why is this like the biggest problem? Because it's hard to do. Mm. It's easy to figure out the numbers. Sure. That's the easy part. It's hard to go do it. How come It's hard to come to grips Mm. with how much it actually costs to run a plumbing business and how much you actually need to charge the end user to be profitable. I guess it's tough. Yeah. And I guess, do you think it's tough because when guys go out there and they charge this, they're like, they're like the counterculture. They're pushing against all the plumbing that they've known. They are. And so they're putting themselves out there. And if they're generational plumbers, like, man, some of the hardest conversations I have is where there's a younger 50% owner and then the dad. Yep. And then the younger guy's like, dude, I'm on board. I understand yeah. this. And he's like, but my dad. Yep. My dad is old school. Whenever I hear old school, I kind of have a vibe. I kind of know what we're talking about. Yep. And I'm like, this is going to be probably almost impossible for you. Yep. Because to transition from, you know, time and materials methodology at 150 bucks an hour to flat rate at, let's just say, 450 bucks an hour. Yeah. That's an insane jump. Like even mm-hmm. for younger guys who are making that jump, it's insane. Yeah, because it just seems like it's fake. Yeah, because it's just like it's such a huge change. Yeah. So like, what? How do you get around that? It's just head trash. That's it, <laughs> Jared. It can't be that simple. It can't just be head trash. It is. It's that. It's literally that simple. It's. It's you have to get over your own head trash. Mm. That's. I mean, I wish I had a more like mm. complicated steps you could follow to make sure you get over your head trash but it's can we get a checklist <laughs> you know it's, it. it's that simple like you you have to get over it. it and the longer you're in business the easier it'll be and um yeah just because you'll have to right and i've talked to business owners who are buying a plumbing business yeah and when i bring up this problem of price they're like i got no problem with that yeah because they're business owners they get it they already have a business and they understand yeah that that business isn't allowed to operate not making any money. Correct. Plumbing businesses occupy this unique, tragic space of being able to last without yeah. making any money yep. for some strange reason, <laughs> you know? It's it's just, it boils down to like plumbing business owners just bootstrapping forever. Sure, And yeah. being okay with and it. And never taking a paycheck. And Well, because, you know, it's what, it's always been done. It's whatever or, I've ever known does it this way. Right. And it's not even not taking a paycheck, like, they might make 120000 a year working like a dog for themselves. Or they might have, you know, three or four guys running around and they have a plumbing business and the business pays them 100000 a year or 200000 a year, but that's it. Mm. And if you actually dug into the numbers, the business isn't profitable. Sure. Right? Or the profit margins are really slim. And yeah. because of that, the owner never has extra cash. They've never been able to retire. They'll never be able to retire. They're probably still out in the field. And usually <clears throat> usually the sole reason that those businesses survive is because the business owner is out in the field. Oh, sure, yeah. The entire life of the business, 
Right. So he never <coughs> moves into the manager role. He's always been out in the field producing revenue for the company. Yeah. That's the only reason the company works. And a lot of times when those businesses have been around for so long, it's like, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, sometimes 90 year old company that has like this base of clients that so, the business owner can then just continue to serve. It's even harder for the business owner to pull out at that point because they're like, well, I want you to do my work. Well, think about this poor business owner that we just described. He basically has a job, but he has a really stressful job. Like he could go get a job for a regular plumbing service company and do all the same stuff and make the same amount of money without all the headache. Like he's taking all the risk, taking on all the headache, taking on all the extra work for no benefit. That's not a business. Yeah. That's a job. It's a crappy job. Yep. So if you love plumbing and you want to go work out in the field for the rest of your life, go do it for somebody else. Yeah, so you can get your weekends off. <clears throat> so you can have weekends off. So you don't have to do billing at night. You have, yeah, you don't have to shut your... You don't have to <laughs> listen to... You don't necessarily have to listen to podcasts like this You don't have to listen jobs. to this podcast between jobs, right? Yeah. If you're going to put all this time and energy and effort and sacrifice and risk into your plumbing business, it better be freaking worth it. Yeah, and, right? and like, it's strange to think how many biz plumbing businesses out there f don't work... And people are more or less okay with it. Like they're not okay with it because yeah. their lives suck, but they're not willing to make any changes necessarily. Like hard changes. Correct. Like being expensive, being known as that expensive guy in town. Yep. Being known as, oh, you're just one of those guys now. Yep. Like all that is, is just ego. Like yep. it's just your ego is going to hurt. Yep. Like when I talk to the business owners who have the really long standing businesses. Yep. And then I'm like, hey man, like you're undercharging. They're like, I could never raise my prices. Because in their head, there's this legacy tied to their company. Yep. And it's like, hey, man, legacies are cool, I guess. But if it's not paying the bills, then it's not a... It, who cares? Yep. Like, what life do you want to live? Yep. Yeah. So going into 2024, you know, the reason, like, if you're, like, you need... This is a continual process, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't ever get cheaper to run your business. <laughs> what? what are you talking about? It only gets more expensive. Inflation's good, you know. Let's see <clears throat> what else is going on. The economy's great right now. Yeah. Like know? I can I can tell you the difference between when I started my plumbing company and now is drastic. Like cost of running the business has gone up a lot. Mm. And it's not because my overhead has gotten higher. It's that the cost of doing business has gone up. Mm. Um COVID drove costs up like crazy. Like everything got more expensive. <clears throat> Groceries got more expensive. Mm -hmm. Vehicles, I bought vehicles for 52000 Now they're 87000 yeah. Um A good friend of ours was tracking plywood like a hawk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was. My first wrap that we got was three grand. Now they're six grand, right? Mm. It's just doubled in cost, right? Yeah. Um, we've gone from, you know, we were at 425 to now we're five, now we're 610 right? Mm -hmm. We just had to go up again because costs go up. Yep. They're not going down. So going into 2024, it's mm. like super important that you're not looking at 2023, what was successful. You're not looking at how much it costs you last year or the year before or the year before. You got to look at it, what it's costing you right now to be successful, right? right? Um, and a good portion of that, like a good portion of your money is going to be, is going to go towards marketing. Mm. And most, like, there's a huge pride point with plumbers who are, uh, I don't I don't need any marketing. Like, my word mm -hmm. of mouth is so good, I don't need marketing. Sure. And I would say that's a good thing, that you do such a good job that word of mouth gets you new customers, but it's not going to be sufficient enough to grow your business. <clears throat> mm -hmm or to continue to have a healthy customer base, right? At a, at scale. It's not going to be enough. You have to mix the two. You have to do marketing to get new customers. You have to have programs to retain your customers. And then you have to do a good enough service to where you lose a negligible amount of old customers. Right? Sure. You're going to have people in your business that make mistakes. Sure. And you're going to lose customers. <clears throat> 
Yeah. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And even, you, even really good people in your business, yep. even your star <clears throat> players are going to make mistakes. Yep. And they're going to piss some people off. Yep. And you need a way to retain customers or get new customers, right? Um, I think it's like, I heard something the other day. It was uh, the S&P on average, grow, S&P 500 on average grows by 9%. So we could kind of consider that the market, right? <clears throat> And so if your business isn't growing by 9% mm. every year, you're technically shrinking. Right. You're technically dying. You're right. technically losing market share. Right. So as costs rise, as inflation goes up, as those things go up, so does your business revenue, at least <clears throat> on average 9% per year. Mm. So if you had 9% growth per year, year after year after year, you have a stagnant business, sure. right? You're just maintaining. Yeah, you're just, yeah, yeah, every, yeah, yep. If you're just continually doing the same amount of revenue over and over and over, technically you're dying, right? Right. You're actually losing. You're not, you're not mm. maintaining at all. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's just an interesting fact to think about. Yeah, so then, so then what do you do to sort of, insulate yourself from those things what kind of things what do you mean well like because going into 2024 you need to understand how you price yourself but you also have to put that you have to be watchful of how you price yourself you can't just be like well i got this price book i built it out we're good to go for 2024 and then just like hang out no you should be good to go like you should be watching the costs of everything right which so, is so important. Like <clears throat> when you get out of the truck, yeah, like you're out of the truck for a reason. That's, that's part of your job. It's far more important than you Watching go doing costs. that plumbing. Yeah, yep. it's huge. <laughs> like Watching costs, spotting problems. Watching costs, spotting problems. Yep. And fixing them. Yes. So, you know, you mentioned like price book. You could build your price book once, set it and forget it. Six months from now, it's you're probably not going to be profitable with that price book. Sure. Right, um, not only has cost of business gone up, but cost of materials has gone up as well. Sure. So, you need to have some way of tracking what your costs are. So, your P and L is a good measure of that. You can look at your P and L. Um, most b- bookkeepers don't organize your P and L properly to where you can actually assess sure. what your costs of doing business are. <coughs> um. So you need to. I mean, we could get into that. Basically, you need some sort of spreadsheet where you're tracking what all your expenses are that you can enter in that will then calculate what your hourly rate needs to be based on your new expenses, right? Mm -hmm. That's what our calculator does. Um, And you need to be doing that at least quarterly, going through your expenses Mm -hmm. and making sure you're accounting for everything in your hourly rate calculator and then making sure you're charging the appropriate hourly rate. And it's also good because you'll probably acquire dumb expenses that you forgot about. Oh, yeah. Like you'll acquire some subscription thing that you wanted to try out. And And then then it sucked. And then you just don't turn it off. And then you look quarterly, you're like, damn, we spent like $2,000 for that? Like what the hell are we doing? And like, like that's why you need to look at it. So those little things don't come bite you in the butt. Correct. Or like the cost of something went way, you know, went up. Yeah. Like your shop rent went up. My shop rent went up this year. Yeah. Or the cost of like, you know, however you're heating your shop went up drastically. Yeah. All my guys got a raise this year. Yeah. Right? Cost of everything goes up. It doesn't go down. So you need to stay on top of it. Um, The other part of that is materials, okay? So when you're pricing yourself, you know, you're going to take this hourly rate. And if you're smart, you're going to go flat rate, right? And so you're going to go to somebody's house, you're going to look at the work, and you're going to say, okay, this is going to take me this many hours. Based on my cost of doing business, like we broke our cost of doing business down to an hourly rate, it's not necessarily an exchange for time. It's just a metric that you can use <clears throat> to judge how much you need to charge, right? right? So don't really think of it as time. Just think of it as a metric that you use, okay? Right, sure. Time, yeah, time was just the way that you got. It's the only way that you can do it because you can't sell a plumber. Right. And and when you think about it as time and an hourly rate, this is how much it costs for me to be here for one hour. Right. It trips you up because 
it, number one, it's hard for you to, it's already hard for you to stomach charging what you need to charge per hour. Right. Yeah. And then if you're only there for 45 minutes, but you sold them an hour, it seems unfair to you. Right. But the reality is you're just using this random metric of time to estimate job costs. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, make sure you make a profit, right? right? So this coffee cup producer, let's say it costs him $4, $10 to make this cup, right? And he wanted to make 20% profit, but his customers were willing to pay $20 for this cup. If he sells it to you for $20, is he ripping you off? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you were willing to pay $20 for the right. cup, right? Yep. It doesn't matter what it costs him to make that cup or how no. much profit he makes on it, right? So in the same way, if you're trying your best to sell your time at 20%, but you're able to sell it and make 30 or 40%, are you ripping the customer off? No. So when you go there for an hour and it only takes mm -hmm. you 40 minutes, sure. it's the same thing, right? They agreed to a dollar amount. Sure. They didn't agree to how long <clears throat> you're going to be there. Right. They agreed to a dollar amount to get their work fixed. Right. Right. And the dollar amount is based off time, but that time is just a metric we're using. Okay? Yeah. We, the, you know, there isn't another metric, at least at this point, to figure out how to actually accommodate all of your costs and profit. Correct. In your business. Correct. So when we go to estimate jobs, we're going to say, okay, I think this is going to take me this long. So let's just say we have a company where $400 an hour and we go to a job um, and, we, and it's going to take us two hours. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, it's two hours times our hourly rate. Mm -hmm. There's $800, okay? Mm -hmm. And let's say we have 30 minutes of drive time getting to this job. We're going to tack on another $200 for drive time, okay? So we're at $1,000 for the labor. And then we need to be profitable on our materials as well, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so <clears throat> when you're... Buying and reselling things, right? Remember, we want to, we are buying materials and la and skilled labor and we're reselling them to the customer, okay? Now, we need to go, just like we did with our labor, we had labor costs, then we had overhead, and we had to figure out what that was. We take our materials and we mark them up enough to maintain our bottom line profit margins. Sure, <clears throat> sure. This one gets a little tricky to understand, but there's there's two ways we can think about it, and it'll lead really good into our P and L dis discussion. Okay, let's say this is the product I'm selling you, this iPhone that I'm holding up. Okay, Dang, it's the materials cool. we're gonna install. Okay, oh, cool. And let's say these materials are a thousand bucks. Maybe we're putting in a new water heater in this in this situation. We have a thousand dollars in labor, and we're buying a thousand dollars in parts for this water heater. Okay. Doesn't matter what kind of water heater it is or whatever. <laughs> it's just a water heater. Don't worry about it. Okay. And it's a thousand bucks. Okay. Is it a, is it a hot water heater? It's an iPhone water heater. Okay. <laughs> iPhone water if I was to just sell you this water heater, I bought it for a thousand dollars and I resell it to you for a thousand. Mm -hmm. What's my profit margin on that? Zero. Zero. <clears throat> Zero profit. Yeah, on the materials part. On the materials. Yeah. Yep. So if I how does that affect your bottom line? So if I made twenty percent profit on mm -hmm. my labor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I made zero profit on my materials, and both of them are a thousand dollars, that cuts my profit margin in half. Hmm. I go from twenty percent profit to oh, ten percent. You had to go profit buy the materials because I had to buy these yeah, materials, gotcha. right? Yeah. So in the same way that you have to mark up your labor, you have to mark up your materials. Gotcha. Okay? In order to do this effectively, you have to understand the difference between markup and margin, which is why in the beginning, we took the cost of making that coffee cup and we divided by 0.8. If we wanted 20% profit margin, we had to divide by 0.8 rather than multiply by 1.2. Right. Multiplying by 1.2 would be marking it up 20%. Mm. dividing by 0.8 would give us a 30% profit margin. Sure. Okay? So best way to explain that. If I bought this for $1,000 mm -hmm. and I sold it to you for $2,000, mm -hmm. that is 100% markup. Right. Yeah. Okay? I bought for 1000 sold to you for 2000 I marked it up 100%. What's my profit margin on that? Oh man. Okay. So you, 
your profit margin on that, like the money you make on it. Think about it this way. You paid me $2,000. Mm-hmm. Mm. And in order to make 2000 I had to spend 1000 Yes, it would be 50%. I have 50% left over, right? Yeah, gotcha. 50% profit right, margin. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So that's the difference between markup and margin, yeah. okay? I can mark it up 100%, but it's only 50% margin. Yeah, gotcha. These guys that are out there marking up their materials 20%. Meaning times by 1.2. Oh, oh times because we're marking 1.2, up, we're marking up. Yeah, yeah. Right? They would charge $1,200 for this, and they'd be like, cool, I made 20% margin. Uh-uh. It's the same case with the cut. It'd be yeah. one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, right? So yeah, so you made you made two hundred bucks because you bought it for a thousand, and then you sold the materials part to me for twelve hundred, and then you kept two hundred dollars. Yeah, out of that exchange. Yep. Which is what? No, nope. I sold it to you for twelve hundred. Yeah, and I kept two hundred. Yeah, yeah, yep. you kept two hundred. It goes down to like sixteen or seventeen percent, something yeah. like that. You lose a couple of percent. Yeah. Okay, so. Then let's go over to our P&L, okay? Keep in mind the markup versus margin, okay? So on your P&L, you have a few different you have a few different spots. We can probably split it up into five different sections, okay? And your P&L might just be one lo- there might be no spots right now, right? They're it might pro- just be like You probably have the spots but they're probably not organized properly. Yeah. Okay, okay so I understand. You don't have the right things in the right spots. Correct. So when you're looking at your P and L. We're gonna go back to the coffee cup, okay? Just because, for some reason, it's this your is, favorite. It's easier to understand uh, because it's simpler, okay? So, at the very top of your P and L, you have total income or gross sales or something of that nature, okay? Basically, how much money your company brought in for the time frame that you're looking at your P and L, okay? So, if you're looking at it for last month then it's how much money you brought in from the first to the last day of the month. Okay? And is that is that when people talk about top line revenue? Is that what that they're is, talking about? That is top line revenue. Okay? Gotcha. Total sales, total revenue, total income, yeah. gross sales, gross revenue, gross income, whatever you want to call it's it. It's top line because that's the top of your P&L. The very top mm-hmm. of the P&L, okay? So let's say you brought in a million dollars, okay? That's how much revenue your company brought in. Let's say we're going back for the year. You brought in a million dollars for the year. The second couple lines out of that are your COGS, mm-hmm. okay? And so what you're doing is you're taking your top line revenue, your gross revenue, and you're going to subtract your COGS from it, mm-hmm. which is going to leave you <clears throat> with the third line. Your COGS might be multiple lines, but you're going to have that third line of gross profit, mm-hmm. okay? Gotcha, okay, okay. So if you made a million dollars and it costs you $500,000 in, let's just say it costs you $250,000 to buy the cups and it costs you $125,000 to ship them and it costs you $25,000 for packing materials and it costs you $100,000 to ship them out to the customer, your COGS are $500,000 total, Right. So everything you bought and resold cost you five hundred thousand dollars. Okay, mm-hmm. your gross profit would be a million minus the five hundred thousand cogs for a total gross profit of five hundred thousand. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay. Gotcha. Or fifty percent. Mm. Right. If it was, if it was higher, the percentage goes up. If it was less left over, the percentage goes down. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. So then, out of that. $500,000, you start subtracting out all of your overhead expenses, okay? Everything above uh, gross profit needs yeah. to be COGS. Everything below gross profit needs to be overhead. Yeah, so gross profit is directly attributed to how much how much it took, like your revenue, and then how much it took to directly do that revenue. Correct. Okay, so that's where gross profit lives. Correct. Okay. Okay. So before we dig into the rest, think about this. What are you have a plumbing business? We're buying and reselling materials and skilled labor. Our cogs are materials and skilled labor. Okay. okay. Yep. So if a plumbing business did a million dollars, okay, and out of that million dollars, five hundred thousand were cogs, two hundred and fifty thousand of that were materials, and we had a gross profit of five hundred thousand. Typical plumbing business runs at a 50% gross 
profit margin, thirty mm-hmm. percent overhead, and twenty percent net. Right, that's what we're shooting for. Mm-hmm. Sometimes gross will be a little different. Sometimes sure. overhead <clears throat> will be a little different, sure. and your net will be slightly different. But overall, that's what we're shooting for. That's what a healthy plumbing service company looks like. Okay? <clears throat> Why? Why is that the spread? <clears throat> because if you think about it, if you're priced properly. That's how your PL will just lay out. Like mm. it's like um, if you go look at a hundred companies that are pricing properly and running a good business, maintaining, you know, a 17 to 20 percent bottom mm. line net revenue, mm-hmm. net profit, that's how their their PL is gonna lay out. Mm. So because you, you know, over time we've been able to look at so many PLs, mm-hmm. right? It's become industry standard. Okay. Every industry has their own standard. Like marketing agencies, they need 80% gross. Sure. Because their overhead is less. Their overhead is the majority of their business. Right, yeah. Like think about what they sell. They sell marketing, right? (laughs) They have very few, very little cogs. Their cogs are super low. To actually do the job. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, And so they need a much higher gross profit to cover their overhead. Yep. Right. So there, and every industry is the same. There's standards across every industry. Gotcha. And the standards arrive because that's just <clears throat> is shown to be what has worked. Correct. Like just like there was a, like originally some guy was like, Hey man, I'm gonna start a plumbing company. Yep. And then he had a PNL and then it was like, Hey, look, you did a good job. But, and your PNL is this. And it's yep. just, that's just how the market, well, I guess it makes sense because everybody's doing the same stuff. Everybody's, everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's buying the same materials. They're buying, and, using and at, the same tools, the, the same of, vehicles. At the end of the day, if you're profitable, sure, okay, gotcha. you're going to see, okay, I have profit left over. Yeah. My overhead was about 30%. My cogs were about 50%. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, and guys figured out that, hey, if we, you know, charge, if we increase our overhead using these things, we did not see an increase in profits. We saw a decrease in profits. I mean, overhead, if it's not necessary, you shouldn't have it. Yeah, I'm just saying that like when guys experiment, right? When yeah. they're like, well, let's try doing this. Like this is an overhead expense. Let's see if it works. And it doesn't work. Then they just have more overhead and less profit. Right. And if, then when they remove it, they profit comes back. Here's the thing. If you have more than 30% overhead, you either have, you either didn't sell enough work mm. Or you have an overhead expense that you don't need, <laughs> or you didn't charge enough. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. The only thing splitting up your P and L does is when there's a problem, it lets me know where to look. Sure, because you know you're looking for certain you're looking for certain statistics in your P and L. Right. And you're like, oh, that's not correct. So I need to go check something out. Think. Mm-hmm. Yep. Think about it. If my if I have a problem, like my net revenue, my profits aren't high enough for the month or the quarter of the year, I go all the way to the top and I go, okay, did I hit 50% gross? Mm. If I didn't, then I know I have a problem with my either how many products I sold. Mm. I either have a problem with my, my gross revenue. Mm. I have a problem with how much I paid for this coffee cup and the shipping, or I have a problem with how much I paid for labor. I have a problem somewhere. Sure. Right? Or I just didn't charge enough. (laughs) But if I go up there and my gross is 50%, then I know the problem is somewhere in my overhead. So I I know I sold enough. Sure. I know I know that I my markup or my my (laughs) cost on my mug was cheap enough, right? And I know that my cost on my labor was cheap enough. So I have an overhead problem or I didn't charge enough, huh. right? And then how do you zero in on like, how do you know you didn't charge enough? Because you have these two choices now. That's where going back and looking at, you know, uh, KPIs and other metrics come in, into play, yeah, sure. right? So the, You'll go back and look at the data. But yeah. now you at least you have an idea of where to look, uh, right? Okay, let's go back up to gross profit, okay. right? If I, if I on... Let's just say we just did this one job and we're looking at a PL and this is the only job we did, okay? And I have my labor expense and I made 100% of my labor, but then I didn't mark up my materials and I know that I need to maintain 50% margin on my materials, right? 
so that I can hit 20% bottom line. If I don't mark up my materials, what does that do to my bottom line? Um, that's going to affect it. It's going to affect it big time, right? Mm-hmm. So if, knowing that I want to hit 50% gross on my P&L, how much do I have to mark up my materials to do that? Mm, I know the answer, but I don't know how to get there. Well, you got to mark, you have, we have to mark them up. Okay. You got to mark them up a hundred percent, hundred percent. Right. So that you can hit that 50% margin on your materials. Correct. If you don't mark up your materials, Mm. 100%, you will never hit 50% gross and you will never have a 20% net. Okay. You absolutely 100% have to. Interesting. There's no ifs, ands, or buts around it. And the reason for that is, Mm. think about plumbing service companies, okay? If you mark your materials up 100% and you're maintaining 50% gross on your materials, Mm -hmm. how many times times does your company... How many times does your company buy materials that it ends up not selling to the customer? Never. All the time. <laughs> oh, sorry. How many times do you um, buy extra materials for a job and they get kicked around in the van and then thrown away? All the time. I was going to say never again. How know, many sorry. times do you bid a job, but you you underestimate the materials? Mm-hmm. All the time. It's about 20% of the time. Mm. Okay, so that leaves you with 30% at the end of the day. Now, if you want 20%, hmm, if you want 20% on your net, <coughs> you you need to shoot for 30. Yeah. Okay. Things are going to happen. Things are going to happen. Yeah. Like when you fill out your, your hourly rate calculator, if you guys are going to go do that and you haven't, you should, um, you're going to shoot for 30% profit because at the end of the day, like the chances of you thinking for everything and executing perfectly is impossible. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. You have to build fluff into your business. Mm. Okay. Every <clears throat> business has fluff. Every business has fluff. It's margin. You're just yeah. protecting your profit margins. Yeah. Okay. So you have to mark up your materials hundred percent. There's there's a whole nother way around pricing. Okay. So I prefer the method we just discussed. Right. Because when you look at a, a P&L, right, and you want to maintain 50% gross profit and 30% overhead, what if you have this part of your overhead that adds a ton of value to your customers that they really enjoy and you have to charge a little bit more for it? If you're just looking at your p and it would seem like it's not worth it because it cuts into percentages, right? Sure, sure. When you use our hourly rate calculator... It doesn't necessarily worry so much about your percentages. Those would be like a second dairy thing. Gotcha. It says, hey, these are all of my expenses. And so in order to cover these expenses and make a profit, this is how much I have to charge. Right. Okay. So then no matter what your expenses are, you're covered. Sure. I especially like this because some people have, you know, some people have like weird things going on where they have debt or they're Mm -hmm. paying off, you know, dad that they bought the company from. And all of that needs to get paid by your customer. Sure. Okay. Not out of your profit margins. Sure. And so when when you use our calculator, it accounts for all that stuff. Okay. So there's a second method to pricing. It's called gross margin pricing. Mm-hmm. It's called, yeah, we'll call it gross margin pricing. Okay. And a lot of guys use this. Let me go back. Second benefit to using our calculator. If you get on any sort of software, it's going to ask you <clears throat> what your hourly rate is. Sure. And it's going to ask you what your material markup is. And it's going to, you're going to build a price book in that software. And it's going to calculate the price for your price book items based off of those two metrics. Yeah. Okay. And, and if think, you don't. I probably think any price book is going to ask for those two metrics, right? Um, there's a couple that do it the second way. Okay. Gotcha. Um, but like the big players like Service Titan, those guys, like anybody else, they're going to base your pricing off of those two metrics. Sure. Okay. So if you use our calculator, it just sets you up to have those metrics available. Yeah, so that when you actually start building your price book and service Titan, you're already off to a good start. Correct. Okay, the other method of pricing would be gross margin pricing. And there's a guy, um, his name is Billy Stevens, runs, I actually really like his stuff. 
He has a software called Sarah. I haven't tried it out. Um, some people seem to really like it, and that's how his software runs. It runs it off gross margin pricing. And the whole theory is that, okay, we know on our P&L, we need to hit 50% gross, 30% overhead, and 20% profit. So if we take our true labor cost and our true material cost, and we mark them both up 100%, that leaves us with 50% margin, right? And so if we, we can price yeah, okay. every yeah, job okay. that way, if we know we're going to, if we know our true labor cost is a hundred dollars for our guy, right? And, and his true labor cost, we're talking about the employee tax. We're talking about Benny's and all those, like, is that what we're we talking about? Say true. Yep. We're talking about the, the Not, actual hourly rate of that employee, yeah. like what you're paying them per hour, yep. plus the employer taxes, plus any commission they're going to make, plus any benefits they have, right? Yep. So my guy's cost a hundred, like we pay them 50 an hour. They cost us 110, right? <laughs> yeah. All things said and done. All said and done. They cost us $110 per hour, mm -hmm. every hour they work. Right. So <clears throat> let's just say it's a hundred, right? So if I was to go to a job and it was two hours of labor, there's $200, let's say two and a half. Cause that puts us back at our water heater. So two, Two hours of labor, two and a half hours plus drive time, 30 minutes, that'd be $250, right? And I have $1,000 in materials. It's $1,250 is the cost to me to do that job, okay? Now, okay. let's do the math on it. You could go, like the, the best way to do gross margin pricing, just like if we want to maintain 20% net, we fill it out as 30% on our calculator yeah. because we need some buffer in there. Yeah. So when you're doing gross margin, you want to maintain 50% gross, so you need to shoot for 60, mm. okay? So to shoot for 60, we would take the cost and we'll multiply it by 2.2. That would be a 60% mm. margin left over, okay? So we're sitting at 1250 times 2.2, $2,750. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, okay, gotcha. The other way, we're at two thousand for the water heater. I mean, it might, it doesn't it doesn't really math because the hourly rate isn't based off what we're actually paying our guys, right? Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. True. It's based upon a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, but if you do this, like if you fill out the calculator, <coughs> and then you go figure it gross margin style, it's going to come out really close to the same. Sure. Right. Um based on what your actual costs are. So that's a whole nother way of pricing, right? What's, what's the, like, what is the best argument for this pricing system? It's really simple. Sure. It's a simple way to do it. Um, the only Simple for who? For the, like, for the business owner, right? Uh, okay, because it could be simple for the business owner or the technician. Um, you know, for the technician, you're going to put all this in a price book and they're not going to know the difference either way. But what if you're at the, what if you're at pre-price book? book but you got guys it could be it could be simpler um even in this instance i would say yeah i don't know it's it doesn't matter either way like mm -hmm. on the technician level it, do, it doesn't matter they're both matter. pretty simple they're both pretty simple at the end of the day it's just boiling down to the hourly rate is tougher for the business owner gotcha. the, once you boil it down to the technician it doesn't matter yeah. Right? Just tell me how to price it. Yeah. Tell me what to multiply. Yeah. Like, is it, is the conversation with the technician, are they like, just tell me what to multiply by my time here? Yeah. And exactly. then I'll, and then I'll double the materials. Exactly. So, yep. okay. Yeah. That it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. Right? The same conversation to the technician. So it's equally simple with the technician. And then, and then what's the best argument for the business owner? Like, how is it simpler? So it's simpler because you don't have to go through all the math of figuring out what your hourly rate is. Right. And by that, you mean you don't have to, like, go deep into your expenses? Yeah. All you have to understand is, mm -hmm. oh, sure. My labor costs yeah. are this much, mm -hmm. and my my material costs are this much, right? Yeah, gotcha. So you really just have to understand true labor and material. Because the, the idea is on your P&L, you'll do that, uh, and then on your P&L, you'll hit that 50% gross profit or gross Correct. Yeah. You aim for 60 and you end at 50. 
50, right? And then everything else should work itself out. Everything else should work itself out. As long as you keep your labor costs at 25%, your yeah. material costs at 25%, and then you keep your overhead less than 30%. Yeah, which is expected overhead of which is expected. vans, tools, shops. Everything will work out. Yeah. Yep. Don't do any weird stuff. Don't do any weird stuff. Interesting. No extra fluff, extra overhead in there for no reason. Okay. Right? And then now contrast that with the hourly rate method. And why is that one better? Or why do you prefer that one, we could say? I prefer that one because the software uses it that way. Sure. And it can account for extra fluff. Sure, when you're trying something, or like even when like, hearing you describe it, because when I talk about pricing the guys, and when they're like, well, I couldn't afford this and that, it's like, hey, man, when you understand your expenses and your hourly rate, it's very simple to envision how to afford things because you put it into this calculator and it changes your rate. And you go, oh, that's yeah. how I afford it. What where, where with the other method doesn't seem like that is necessarily as obvious. Correct. And here's the real kicker of why... I don't really like gross pricing. So we'll use gross pricing on larger jobs mm. because it's a really easy way to just bid it real quick. Sure. Um, rather than having to, you know, do a bunch more math. We can just go, what does this cost? How many hours do you think you're going to be there? Sure. And we mark the whole thing up by 2.2. Yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> when, when you have an hourly rate calculator and you have all of your expenses in that calculator, you can go in and you can see what, like you can see what it costs you per hour to run. You can see, then you can calculate what it costs you per day, per week, et cetera, et cetera. You can see, you can then calculate like how many hours you need to sell in order to hit operating expenses to hit 10% profit, 20% profit, 30% profit. You can also go in and use that calculator to predict the future, right? Mm. So <clears throat> if you downloaded our calculator and you put all your expenses in and you filled it out, and let's say you did it with three guys and you wanted to see what happens if I add a fourth guy, like what does that look like for the numbers sure. of my business? Sure. You can go add a fourth guy and then go add <laughs> a fourth service vehicle and see what that does to your to your bottom line. Um, and that information is incredibly eye-opening. Yeah, sure. Like, it might not be as scary as you think. No, it's not. Like when you go from three to four guys, typically you only need to sell one more hour hmm. every day to hit 20% profit margin. Yeah, still, so, that, right? so that new guy. So, mm, so well, my thought is, because there's a tendency, it's like, well, if I get a new guy, I got to get this guy selling immediately i gotta keep him busy eight hours a day and i have to make sure he's proficient like yeah. right out i can't i can't make time to train this guy yeah and if you and if you go plug it into the calculator and you see oh dang i only gotta he's only gotta sell one more hour a day all of a sudden you're like cool so and i see now i have all this extra fluff in my hourly rate which means I could go spend more on marketing. Sure. Okay, let me go into my calculator and see how much more I can spend on marketing. Maybe I can keep this guy busier than that. Like right. maybe I, I might be able to push my marketing and be able to hire a fifth guy, sure. right? So you you learn a ton of valuable information about your business uh. by breaking all your numbers down into a document that can show you exactly what's happening in your business. Man, and then this other pricing method, it it doesn't have that capability? You don't have that capability because all you're doing is saying, okay, this is uh, what my labor costs. It's almost like a per job pricing thing. Doesn't you can't really use it as a tool to project the future. You can't. No. Nope. It's just uh we know how to we know how to make money on this job. Yep. And it'll if we stick within these parameters, it'll pencil out at the end. As long as we stay busy enough, but you don't even have any metric telling you how busy you need to stay, right? Yeah, sure. So like huh. if you <clears throat> If you go grab our calculator, you'll see on there, it'll spit out like how many hours you need to sell every day to hit operating expenses, how many hours you need to sell every day to hit 20% profit, right? Huh. And so that number right there, like we're on Service Titan and we go look every single day, every single week, and we track it um, in a separate spreadsheet. My manager does. Um, how many hours we sold every day 
and then how many hours we sold for the week. And so we know like what profit margin did we hit today? We don't have to wait a month from now to go yeah. back and look at our P&L. Yeah. yeah. We know based on our calculator, we should have hit 20% profit today. Or over the week, we should have hit 20% profit. Or over the month, we should have hit 20% profit. So we're able to catch things that go wrong much faster, oh, right? Which is huge. Cause... And then our P&L, instead of using our P&L to say, oh, crap, we weren't profitable last month, and now it's literally a month and a half later, um, and then going back and trying to fix it, we can fix things much sooner, right? Right. And then our P&L becomes kind of a second measurement. It really yeah, sure. becomes our third measurement. Sure. So... We look at, we track hours sold, and we can judge the health of our business daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly based on hours sold. We also do a banking system called Profit First, so we can kind of see the health of our business based on our bank account balances. Mm -hmm. uh, that's basically just, there's a book called Profit First for Contractors. It's a good book. Everybody should read it. Um, and then they should set up their bank accounts how they tell you to in profit first for contractors, okay? Good part about that book is, he, in that book, he identifies that most contractors, the reason they never have any money left over is because they're not charging enough. <laughs> the first book, the original book, just profit first, um, he's like, look, most businesses just have too much overhead. Sure. And yeah. that's their problem. Sure which might be the case. And then he wrote Profit First for Contractors, and uh, he identified, look, you just aren't charging enough. Mm -hmm. You're undercharging, is what, is what most contractors fail to do. Yeah. Um, and basically, you set up you know, seven or eight different bank accounts, to, depending on what you got going on, and all of the money that you make comes into an income account. So every day, my wife goes in to our bank account online, and she goes... <laughs> Okay, here's our income account. This is the money that came in. And we divvy it up to the other accounts based on percentages. So a certain percentage of our income goes to taxes. A certain percentage of our income goes to owner compensation. A certain percentage of our income goes to profit. So we have a profit account, mm. right? A certain amount goes to our expense account. So all of our expenses get paid out of one account. Um, and then a certain percent goes into, um, you know, a few other things. Like we have a few, um, you know, programs in our business that we run that we make sure and set money aside mm. for, right? One of those is like a, a Liberty fund. We reimburse you for gun and ammo up to a certain mm. amount, right? So we set money aside for that. Paid time off, we set money aside for that. Make sure we always, we're always covered there, right? Um, and what that does is like, if we're running our business, right? <laughs> And we're putting certain percentages away for expenses, taxes, profit. Mm. Well, if we don't have enough money in our expense account, guess where it comes from? Profit. Profit. If we don't have enough money left over for taxes, guess where it comes from? Profit. If we don't have enough money to pay the owner, guess where it comes from? Profit. If we don't have enough money to pay for <laughs> you know, our Liberty Fund, where does that come from? Profit. So if you're not able to maintain 20% uh, sure. profit, you got problems. you're going to see it yeah. right away. Yeah. You're going to have to pull from your profit account and you go, okay, I have a problem. Yeah. So we can see our sold. Jeez. We watch our bank balances. And then we go look at our P&L. We always catch things, our sold bank balances. We know what the P&L is going to say. Oh, right? man. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you before my P&L gets here, we're going to be low on on net or we're going to be low on gross right or we're going to be high on net or or whatever based on what i've seen from our sold and bank balances mm -hmm. so that's what you get out of you know understanding each individual expense and how it ties back sure versus <clears throat> just the gross margin way of doing it yeah, dang! Sounds like you get a sounds like you get a lot. It is it's, it's <laughs> like super super like, valuable. Like what you broke down is just, I mean, it's it's quite astounding, really, because it's like what you just talked about is like the tools to really assess the health of your business. Yeah, not only to assess the health, but to identify the problems. Because yeah, and I mean, not only to like not only does 
knowing your numbers help you figure out what you need to charge to the customer. Sure. It helps you predict the future. It helps you make smart business decisions. It helps you know if you're healthy or not. I mean, it's, it's extremely vital to your business. Like most guys listening to this won't even understand how important that is. What I just described, they won't even, they'll, they'll have a hard time even grasping like how, how cool that is. I mean, Jared, every time we talk about this, I grasp it a little bit more. Even in this conversation, I'm like, wow. A little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is, this is incredible. It's super important. Like, <laughs> like and that's like, just knowing your pricing numbers. Yeah. Right. Sure. That's yeah. just knowing your. These aren't like, these aren't like business system KPIs no. and all these things. Like, there's a bunch of other numbers that help you, but like, like, it, I mean, let, let me just say this. Like, if you guys made it this long in the podcast, good for you because. The reality of that pricing calculator that we give out for free mm-hmm. is that that is an incredible tool mm-hmm. like that we should just charge for, but we don't Yeah, for for <laughs> our own weird reasons, right? We probably should charge we pro- for it. Well, only to I'd add- probably, only probably to, be a lot richer right now. <laughs> well, only to add the value to it so that yeah. when somebody gets it, they treat it with respect. Yeah. Because so many people get it and then they just throw it in the back of their car like every other freebie they got on Instagram. Yeah. But the reality is, is it's a tool that can literally make your business make money. Yep. Like, it's so dumb. Yep. <laughs> like, it's the simplest, stupidest thing. Yep. But not only make money, it can help you make good decisions about your business. Yep. Which, like, just understanding the raw fact of when I add an expense, this is what needs to change in my business. Yep. Or this is, yeah, this is what needs to change in my business to accommodate the expense and yep. hit margins. Hey, true story. There's actually a better version of that calculator that you get when you join our coaching program. No. <laughs> um, and not that I didn't want to give it away for free, but it's slightly more complicated. And I know if I gave it away for free, people would use it wrong. Yeah. So, <laughs> Well, people already use the calculator wrong right now. Yeah. So part of like, if you sign up for our coaching program, you get the better calculator. And then you also get somebody, I sit down with you one-on-one and walk through it with you to make sure it's 100% filled out properly because it's so dang important in your business. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there is a version that we charge for, just to be totally open and honest sure. and transparent. Um, but it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, that's a, even what we charge for that version and everything else is a small cost when it comes to just, like even even just for somebody to understand what you just broke down in the sense of, the three ways to spot businesses and I to spot problems in your businesses. Yeah. Like that in and of itself can save thousands upon thousands of dollars. Oh yeah. Just totally. to know you have a problem a month and a half prior to, you know, you previously knowing you would have a problem, right? Yep. Like that's huge. So yes, I agree. So back to that's just one, that's just one small aspect of the numbers in your business. Mm-hmm. Now That provides an enormous amount of data, okay? Then you get on a CRM that tracks other data points, and you have, you end with this ability to run your business based off data and math, (laughs) right? So your entire business, you're not running off guessing. You're not running off trying this to see if it works. Mm -hmm. You are looking at numbers and data and how decisions you make affect those numbers and data so that you can make solid business decisions, not guesses. And that's how you need to be running your business. Right. It's not a guess. It's not a, Mm -mm. this guy's doing that over there. It's not a, I'm going to copy that over there. Mm -hmm. It's a, I know my numbers. I know how this thing operates. I know how doing certain things affects certain data points. And I know how those data points affect my bottom line. Mm-hmm. And that's how you need to run your business. Yeah, if you do it that way, 2024. Do it that way, 2024. 2024 will be your best year yet. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I think 2024 is going to be a good opportunity for plumbing businesses because uh, mm-hmm. here's why. We have... we. We went through COVID, right? Everybody started a business. Every, well, not during COVID, but like sure. tail end of COVID, like people people who had plumbing businesses and who were on it, like myself, did very well, mm-hmm. right? We were able to grow very quickly. We had tons of customers. Customer acquisition was cheap. Everybody was working from home. 
They were all using their plumbing more, so naturally they had more problems. Yep, yep. They were spending more time in their homes, so naturally they wanted to upgrade their plumbing more. Um, and they were all getting, you know, COVID relief money. So yeah. they were making more money. <laughs> yeah, it was right? a beautiful time. <laughs> so it was a beautiful time for plumbing businesses, yeah. okay? And and I'll, I'll be totally honest. It's part of the reason we were able to grow so fast, mm, right? Sure. We grew incredibly fast. Sure. It was because the market was good and the my competition at the tail end of COVID had shrunk. Sure. Right? So there was a hole, a big yeah. old hole in the market. Mm -hmm. Lots of work. Not very many people wanting to push forward on it because they were still scared mm -hmm. about COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And they didn't know what the future was going to hold, mm -hmm. okay? They got, and that's a whole other conversation, right? <laughs> um, so we had a ton of plumbing businesses see the success and then they all started up and we right. saturated the market. COVID relief money went away. Yep. Everybody had to go back to work. Everybody already had their crap fixed. Mm -hmm. um, and the work has slowed way down. So search volume is way down mm -hmm. and there's a ton more people yeah. wanting to get the work, right? There's a guy I talked to recently he said, it's a dog fight out there, man. It's a dog fight out there, right? So there's all these businesses that if they didn't spend the time building brand awareness mm -hmm. and a customer base these last couple of years and they're trying to build it now, it's just harder. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the good thing about that is all the businesses that started and didn't focus on brand awareness, they're going to give up and they're going to quit because they're going to fail, mm -hmm. right? Sure. It, it got hard, and when things get hard, yeah. people quit. Yeah, 2024, we're probably running into where these guys are running out of money. They're running out of money. They're, they're having to lay guys off. And they're getting back to right where they were pre-COVID yeah. or at the tail end of COVID. Yeah, they're running out of drive. Yeah. They don't have the vision. They don't have the business model. They don't know their numbers, right? right? Yeah, sure. And they're not running a good business, right? That's 90% of plumbers out there. <laughs> yeah. And so they're dying off. 2024, interest rates are going down. I think there's three scheduled interest rate drops. Housing market is going to boom again. Houses are going to go up in price. There's going to be a buying frenzy. And it's going to drive business for plumbers. Mm -hmm. People are going to be <clears throat> making money on their houses. Oh, sure. People are going to be selling houses and need repair. People are going to be buying houses and want to do upgrades. It's going to be a good time for plumbers. And if you can get in now and learn your numbers and get your pricing right, start working on your brand, 2024, I believe, is going to be a good year for you. Hmm. There'll be more call volume, less competition. It's a good time to start. Just gotta, just gotta, you gotta not be like the other guy who's scared of it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And recognize, you know what? I'm gonna get in, and I'm gonna work hard towards it, and I'm not gonna quit until I win. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Cool, man. Cool, man. Thanks, Jared. This has been fun. See you, Holmes. Yeah. <laughs>